Lucia builder on the Lusitania, the Lusitania, the Lusitania. Father was a builder on the Lusitania, but the Lusitania went down. Just now, the padlock's off the gate. That means work for the time being for 3,000, 4,000, maybe 5,000 men. Belt tightened, thin bellied, dirty shirted shipbuilders with tattooed arms, early morning cigarette coughs, football talk, nice wives, nice kids, old cars, roses in the garden, and a rare skill the devil couldn't touch. Each man is building the ship himself, the others are only helping. The day is begun on Clyde Bank, and the ship winces and braces itself for the first blow. This is Hugh Sweeney, who laid the keel. For the welders to weld their plates of steel. For caulkers and burners to smooth the joints. For electrical men to lay their points. For joiners and fitters to work with a vengeance. For engineers to connect their engines. For fellers to push and shafts to pull. For painters to paint away at the hull. Hugh Sweeney is 65. He's been laying the keels of the world's big ships since 1919. This is his last ship. The world will never build another big ship. So the world will never need another Hugh Sweeney. Sweeney's a man of the Clyde, of the rough, dirty Clyde. He's known an empty pocket and an empty stomach between ships. How do you make a ship like this? First, take 17,200 tons of steel. Add 1,000 tons of aluminium. Mix with 1,000 miles of multi-core cable. Warm with thousands of cylinders of oxygen. Hundreds of ballpoint pens and pencils. Thousands of gallons of office tea. And enough drawing paper to wallpaper the Taj Mahal, inside and out. A plan's a plan for all that. Men are working. Stomachs are aching for meat pies. They fumble in their back pockets to make sure the ten shilling note is still where they left it last night. They light up the fag ends, they ask each other the time. Time for labour. Time for refreshment. The horn blows to herald the beginning of the dinner ritual. The fellows of the black squad, the ironmen, tankmen, searchers, watermen, studmen, rod pushers, chippies, sparks and loftsmen, and their sons carry their cans. Cylindrical tins, four inches long, diameter three and a half inches, capacity 38 and a half cubic inches of tea. They don't all drink tea. A lot of the heavy lads trudge their boots to the pub outside the gate, and the pub's waiting for them. 150 bottles of whiskey on display when there's a ship on the stocks. The barmen hear the horn blow, they set up the drinks in the appropriate places. And the vessel slides smoothly down into the Clyde. As smooth as the gummy side of an unemployment stamp. But when there's no ship in the yard, the bar is empty. Except maybe for the odd man who's trying to talk the boss into letting him have a wee dram till he gets his unemployment pay. Well, I, I worked in the, the Queen Mary and the Queen Elizabeth, and this is a great ship. I don't doubt about that, but my fears are the days of big ships are finished. I think the aeroplanes will take over. Not after, not after a ship. I think ship. so. Certainly not after so. a ship. It's a beauty. Even, even the, the management in Clyde Bank, as they want to give up the shipyard, they're going into their turbines, which is a future in that. They don't want the shipyards. I think it's the biggest worry in the town at the present moment, because they need work. And we'll be shouting, hip, hip, the door. We don't want to leave John Brown's. We don't want to leave the Clyde. We don't want to leave Scotland.